but we are going to go right away and prepare the first transaction the first transaction and for that we kind of do a few things in order to make a transaction let's let me show you how it looks like so this is the the uniswap router we access the contract here in order to make a transaction we will use the function swap exact ether for tokens meaning zero one ether that's what we're given and we're getting some variable number of tokens and as you can see it, it takes a few parameters the the payable amount how many tokens you're sending in, in ether in value the amount out minimum the path the two whoever will receive the tokens at the deadline we need all of these parameters to make a swap all right guys check this new project i've created it's called mev dao and it's simply a community where we will be building mev tools the telegram link is t.me slash mev dao let's start with the deadline the deadline is um is simply a timestamp of when do you want your function to expire so let's say one hour from now your swap to expire because date now gives us the current time you can see here date now it gives us the time right now in milliseconds we simply divide that by a thousand because in solidity the time is defined in seconds and then we give it the following 60 times 60 that is one hour from now meaning if after one hour our swap is not accepted for whatever reason it's simply discarded it's invalid it's not going to execute if it happens so now we need the first transaction since we are using flashbots we need two parameters when it comes to making transactions the first one is called signer and this simply is the signing wallet this is who will make the transaction we need the private key and all that data and then the transaction now the transaction is an object that contains you know like this one it contains all of this key information we don't need to specify to specify everything because flashbots it's smart enough and it fills the data that we haven't specified but we need some key elements of course for that we will use the uniswap populate transaction and we will do swap exact if for tokens function now populate transaction it simply takes we we pass the parameters and it gives us a transaction object with all the data and everything formatted nicely the first parameter of this function swapped exact it for tokens is the um, how many tokens we want to get as you can take a look the amount out minimum since this has this is a, a value variable this is something that you include later on the first parameter is the amount out minimum how many tokens we want to get for our value for our ether this is the amount and the first amount is as you can see here this is the one then we need the path and the path is with address and the token to capture this is simply we want to give this token and get this token then we need to pass the the two address who will receive the tokens and that will be signing wallet to address and the deadline now we need to tell the what i believe yeah it's not an object it's just included like that then we need to pass a few more data to that transaction the value this is how many tokens you are given the buy amount as you remember the buy amount is this variable zero one ether that's how many tokens we want to buy for the front running transaction the first transaction then we need to specify the type 2 the max fee per gas that's going to be max gas fee if you remember the max gas fee is this one the priority fee max priority fee per gas this is the one this this is going to be priority fee and the gas limit now the gas limit it really doesn't matter because it will use as much as it needs to use and it will refund wherever it's not used so in this case i'll give it three hundred thousand because that's pretty much more than enough to make this swap so that's that's the swap of the first transaction this will be sent to flashbots in a bundle now we need to this this function I've, I've checked it myself and sometimes it fails and that's because we need to add the chain id so we simply take this and we use the, the spread operator to fill all the parameters there and then we add the chain id the chain id is not included for you cannot include it here it fails for whatever reason and you need to include it later so like like that then this is the first transaction this is the buy before the, the victims buy and then we need to pass the second transaction let's call it victims transaction with chain id we need the chain id 
So let's pass the chain ID and the transaction using the spread operator to open up all of the values, all of the object keys. So now we do the signed middle transaction. This is simply a function that, like before here, we are passing the signer and the transaction, but because this transaction, the victim's transaction is not ours, it's from another person. We need to do it like so, sign transaction. You see the object sign transaction, this is important. And then we do the following, ethers, utils, serialize transaction. And we pass this victim's transaction with chain ID. Then an object with R, let's do it like so, R, S, B. These are the signature parameters. You probably are familiar with that. But this is basically your private key break, broken down into, into components, let's just say. So yeah, what we're doing is we're taking our first transaction. This is the one. Then we are putting right below the victim's transaction. And finally, we are passing our third transaction, which is us selling the tokens we got for Ether, more Ether that we put in, in theory. Okay, pass second transaction. This is the one. And then we prepare the third transaction. Now, you need to approve the token. So you got some tokens here, let's say USDT, USDT and you need to swap them back. And for that, we need to approve them. How do you approve them? Well, you send another transaction. In this case, let's do it. ERC20, ERC20 factory, attach token to capture. This is the token that we captured. And we are simply starting the contract for that token contract, like that. And then we do third transaction. And we pass the signer, sign a wallet and the transaction like before. Then we do await ERC20 populate transaction and we do approve. This is a simple approval. Then we approve to the Uniswap address because we're sending the transaction to the Uniswap router. And then how many approval, how many tokens do we want to approve? Well, this one, first amount out. Then we pass the other parameters that are needed. In this case, value is gonna be zero in string, just in case, type two max fee per gas this is gonna be max gas fee as before max priority fee per gas priority fee and the gas limit which is gonna be 300,000 great this is the third transaction now we need to include them we need to do the same thing here we need to include the chain ID to the third transaction and it needs to be done after all of this process because it's otherwise it will fail if you include the chain ID here it will not work I know I don't know why but it's that's the case and we prepare the final transaction. The final transaction is the one where we take our tokens and we swap them back for Ether. How much Ether? Hmm. We'll see how much. So let's prepare the fourth transaction. We need the designer, like before, signing wallet, and the transaction. We do the same thing. In order to swap the tokens back, we use uniswap.populate transaction and we do swap exact tokens for ETH. Now, because we're swapping tokens for Ethereum, this is the function we are using. And we need to specify how many tokens we are given, how many tokens we want to get, the path, the receiver of the Ether and the deadline. So the amount in is gonna be the first amount by like this, this is how many tokens we got from the first swap. We do that. And then we need to tell it how many ether we want to get. And in order to do that, we need to calculate a few things first. See, we calculate how many tokens we get from zero one ether, how many tokens the victim gets after the after our swap, and we need to calculate how many ether we get from uh, from us selling the tokens for ether. And in order to do that, we simply do the following. We update the reserves as before. When you make a swap, the only thing that changes is the reserves. There are less tokens from one and more tokens for another token. That's we take the previous updated reserve A, updated reserve B, and at amount in, let's call it two, two. We're taking the first reserve, the reserve of ETH, and then we are adding the tokens that the victim gave to the user. And then we take the second buy amount, which is this one. Yeah, the third amount out will be a, a wait, Uniswap, get amount out. And this will be, let me check. 
this, these are the tokens that we got and the reserves. In this case, the B reserve goes first because this is the token reserve and the Ether reserve goes after. This is how many tokens we get. I mean, how much ETH we get at the end with a profit. Ideally with a profit after everything has been executed. We go here and we pass that to the swap exact tokens. This is the minimum amount out from the swap tokens for ETH. Then we need to pass the path. And this is an array where we say token to capture and with others. Finally, we need the receiver and the deadline. The receiver will be simply signing wallet. Others and the deadline as before, the same thing. Now we need to, like before, we need to pass all of these ver values here. We can simply copy all of this straight up. It's the same. Value in this case is zero because we're giving tokens and we're getting ether. Then we need to update this like before. Like here, we simply copy this. And we add the chain ID to the fourth transaction, like so. Yeah. So now we have all the transactions. We have the transaction where we buy first, then the victims buy, then the approval, so that we approve the tokens to swap, and then the swap from tokens to ether. 